Hello again. Well, we're having all kinds of weather here these days. Last week I saw the stunningly beautiful northern lights here with deep reds and green colors. Uh, a very rare occurrence here in the Netherlands. And then we had a whole day of snow, also not happening very often anymore. Then a glorious warm spring day, then blustery March storms and more lovely spring weather. The birds and the flowers certainly seem to think spring is here. The lovely daffodils are out and some more flowers are starting to bloom. It's time to get to work in the garden. First job is weeding and raking the gravel. But I can't stay out in the garden all day because I'm going to make something in miniature as well. I think it was in the advent vlog 25 where I asked if you'd like me to explain any other things I made for the Christmas room box. And in the comments, Rats Cats asked if I could show how I made the stone flooring. You know, the one under the stove, which I made from egg cartons. And of course I'll show you. Now, I did not come up with this uh, technique myself. I don't know who did this originally. The technique has been around for decades. And I don't know where I saw it first. There may have been a tutorial floating around 20 years ago when I first started. You know, the days of dial-up internet. <laughs> but I do remember seeing several great examples of stone flooring and bricks made from egg cartons in the past. And I think they were shown on blogs back then. Uh, one in particular I remember was someone who made a red brick path with steps and different brick patterns and colors. It was really wonderfully made and all from egg cartons and a bit of paint, of course. So, of course, we'll need some egg cartons and it's lovely to have some free material when you're buying eggs. Uh, although with the price of eggs nowadays, it doesn't seem like it's free anymore. Um, I don't have a lot of egg cartons because I have my own chickens, so they're laying at the moment. So um, I don't buy any eggs, only in wintertime. And uh, the big, the bigger ones, you know, the the like ten or twelve eggs in the carton. That's better because you have a the lid has a, a bigger flat area, and that's where I'm making the stone flooring from. Now, if you're making bricks, you can use most of the parts of the egg carton, but for the bigger stone flooring, you'll need the flat parts. So there's not that many parts you can use. So I've gathered together some of the materials we'll be using and I'm just going to pretend that this is the floor. It's about the same size as I used uh, under the wood burner and uh, of course your floor may be a lot bigger. But what I do first is I take a piece of paper the size of the floor or actually it's slightly smaller than the floor to account for the um, grouts, grout lines. And um, I've drawn a little sketch of how I would like the flagstones or the, the stone floor to look. And in my case, um, I like them to be not the same size. You can have cut stone floors which are all the same size or you can have them two sizes or you can have natural edges. And I like the natural edges uh, so I've done that. And um, when I cut the, the paper out of the egg cartons, I will rough up the edges as well. But it's good to, to make a little sketch first to see if it's a pattern you like and if, if you, you know how much you need and, you know, those kind of things. And I actually did a little test because... On my, stick together, my egg carton, there's this print with the um, uh, organic label on it. And um, you can feel that there's 
you can feel it. It's in there. It's printed in there, actually. So I did a little test, and I flattened out the size of uh, the, the size, the sides of the carton as well by wetting it. Just just soaked it. And like I said, it's basically it's a paper mache, so it will come apart. I also tried the sides, these uh, parts and uh, try to flatten them as well and dry them and it will work but as you can see the parts where they were folded um, they come apart really easily but this would be good if you're doing uh, small bricks you could um, wet them down and soak them basically not too long because it will come apart and then dry them between two towels and maybe um, put something heavy, heavy on top until it's dry. I didn't do that. I just quickly dried it. But um, here I flattened this piece out. And uh, I did sort of rub off the print so you wouldn't be able to see it once I paint over it. Uh, the indentation, I mean. So I've done that. And here I have just about enough. Maybe like that. We'll see. Maybe put the small one over here to cut those out. And I've taken some of the paints I have. I think these colors would be good. And actually, I found, and I've kept those, two of the offcuts of the uh, stone flooring I made for the Christmas room box. And so I could see which colors I use. And you can just look at um, any pictures on online uh, just to check what colors they have. They often also have some bit of green and there is already green background. So there often is some green in there or like a bluish tone or <clears throat> depending on which color you're choosing. I like the light natural colors. And then for the grout, I use a wall filler. And um, I also used, actually, <laughs> Mod Podge. Uh, if you, maybe you've seen it, the um, wall, tile, wall tile video where I tried the shining Mod Podge. I didn't like it at all. But for this, this um, use, it's really good. Uh, and I have got the matte one. That was an old bottle. It was still good, so using that as well. So let's just... Well, it's not going to fit entirely, so I'll just... My hands are shaking, I don't know why. I did do some exercise earlier, <laughs> maybe that's why. Who knows? Anyway, so then uh, just try and position them so that you can cut them out. I don't like those cracks. Well, maybe that might look natural. Who knows? Now you can do this two ways. You can either um, paint the whole, um, before you cut it out, paint everything in the stone colors you want and then cut out the flagstones or I cut out the flagstones and paint them afterwards. Now I think I did that. Uh, I painted the whole thing first and then cut them out um, in my Christmas room box. but. When you cut those out, the stones, you'll have to repaint the edges anyway. So I just thought it would be easier to cut it out beforehand. Now, the edges. Um, I don't like them when they're that sharp. So I'm going to uh, rough up the edges. And I'm going to do that by using water again. Because it will weaken uh, the paper. And it's very easy to pull some of it off then.
Okay, I've glued the pieces to the um, the little uh, floor area. <laughs> and now I'm going to paint the base coat on there. And I'm thinking it's probably this one. Coco, it doesn't really matter. But um, I'll try to make it as similar to the <laughs> to the one I painted before as I can an old paintbrush this is uh, as good as dry this is fine and now I'll put on the next layer and I thought I had the right color but it's this one I think mushroom um, and I remember the color name so that should be it. And I'm just going to um, apply it, but not um, all over, just so that you will be able to see a little bit of the base coat still shining through there. Okay, that's dry enough. And now I can put on the third coat, which is Oyster Beige. And I actually put on a little bit more of the second coat because I didn't like the base coat showing through too much. So this one, I'm going to use a dry brush because I don't want to use too much. And I'll just make it a little bit drier on my brush and see what it does it's a bit too dry probably just play with it a little bit and uh, you don't have to put on You can do a little bit more in some areas. Let's try this one. This one has harder bristles. So this will have a different effect and a flat. See, it's flat as opposed to this one is rounded. So you might get a different there. Very different. And I'm rotating the brush a little bit because I want it to look natural. I don't want to create a pattern. Okay, now this has dried as well. And now I'm going to, I'm happy with that. So I'll just um, put some Mod Podge on there. And all it is, is a matte sealer. Um, I don't want glossy because that wouldn't look right on stone, on a stone floor. So I'll just seal it uh, with a matte sealer. And um, I'm doing this because when you're doing the grouting, um, you need to wipe it off again and if you don't put a sealant, a sealer on, then um, you might just hurt that. I mean, after all, it is still a paper product. Card, it's still paper. So, it just makes it stronger. Let that dry and then I can start grouting. Right, so this is drying pretty quickly and I'll just, in the meantime, prepare some of the wall filler. Uh, you don't need a lot for this small area. And I'm just going to color it a little bit because the white I think is just too white and this is a like an acrylic um, 
filler as well so you can just add some water to it or some coloring and I'm going to use uh, the oyster beige as some coloring see how that what that looks like yeah that's good I think and you can do it around the edges as well and I didn't do that on my floor because um, I've got the flagstones just laying on top of my wooden floor and I didn't want to damage the wooden floor so the edges are not grouted uh, it's nicer if you do grout the edges because it looks more real but like I said I didn't want to ruin the floor so I didn't do that now if you're doing a large floor you should work in sh in small um, what would you call that batches now areas <laughs> because um, if the wall filler or the stuff you're using for grout starts to dry sometimes it can be especially if you're using if you're using real grout wall or tile grout um, it's very difficult to get it off once it's dried so you have to pay attention to see it's already starting to dry and now we just take a little bit of a cloth or some paper towel and you kind of wipe it off not too vigorously because you want to keep it in the grout lines and if you start um, wiping it too hard then you're gonna pull it out like here it's already pulling away a little bit Actually, it's not so good to use paper because uh, the paper leaves, you know, little bits of paper stuck in the grout. So you should be using a cloth. And I've got old an old cloth and I keep these especially for paint and that kind of thing. So carefully wipe off the excess and yeah like I said in my tile vid wall tile video as well be careful because it's you know it's paper <laughs> you're dealing with even though you've got a coat coating on it just be gentle
Here we are. It's finished. Doesn't it look great? I really like it. Um, I let it dry overnight and I did the I color the grout lines uh, when the grout was still wet. Uh, maybe you shouldn't do that. I was just a bit impatient, so I did that anyway. But it's it's great effect and uh, you can, you know, move around the paint and play with it a little bit until you're happy with it. But um, yeah, the egg carton, <laughs> I keep forgetting the word, <laughs> the <laughs> egg carton, um, gives, you know, the roughness of the egg garden gives a great uh, stone effect. And you can use it for flagstone flooring and walls. Walls would be great as well. So, yeah, have a go. Play with it. Um, another time I'll be making the bricks. Uh, I think I actually may use that on the outside of one of my houses. But it's a lot of work and uh, you need a lot of egg gardens. And maybe you can use different type of paper as well. If you have some handmade paper, which is expensive, but uh, maybe I should do it myself. <laughs> That's for another video, I think. <laughs> for now, thank you for watching. Until next time.